Sports. Remember, new episodes premiere every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 p.m. on TV15 and across other social media platforms. I'm Jesenia Lassiter, wishing you a wonderful week. Stay friendly, St. Martin. Welcome to the Late Night Show. Hope everything is okay. Hope everything is all right. I'm your host, Andrew Dick. Okie dokie, kids. What's happening on the lovely island of St. Martin? We begin with the news of um, the new candidate for the Minister of Justice. So what had happened was Frankie, the good leader of the Sam Party, he kind of shut me up because I went on a whole rant on Friday and I was like, uh, he's not being transparent. Uh, he's not saying the things he needs to say. Uh, why do we not know who's going to be the next minister of justice? Is it going to be Tamara? Is it going to be Nzinga? Is it going to be Cecile? Is it going to be Chacho from Ahuba? No. Frankie Myers just pull out the old Frankie. You don't know. Uh, only those who you, um, who's a bit older would know that phrase. I don't know if you remember. You don't know. You, you remember it? No? You don't remember? You don't know? <laughs> Ask him Anyway, so <laughs> he pull out, out of his hat, he magician hat, Natalie, Saskia, tackling. Now, of course, her name is not Saskia, but I figured she looked like a Saskia, right? She looked like a Saskia. But um, apparently, Natalie Tackling, the head of the voting bureau, um, has been tipped as the next minister of justice. Um, it kind of um, shut everybody up because everybody was kind of doubting. Like, I was, I, I for sure wasn't doubting Frankie. I was like, I know Frankie will come with a, a great decision because Frankie is old school and the old school know things. So I know Frankie would have come out with something that was out of the bag. And out of the bag, it was. Should I wipe my mouth from the ass like I said? No? It's still evident? Okay, my bad. Okay, so he get a lawyer, okay? She has her own law firm, and she is going to be the next Minister of Justice if everything goes well with the screening. Now, what do we know about um, Natalie Saskia tackling? Here is a clip. Sure, you know, essentially, you know, kind of born and raised here to, to the extent. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the passport says something different, but uh, regardless, you know, uh, you know, grew up here, went to, you know, Sister Regina MPC and, uh, and an attorney by profession. So uh, moved back, you know, as soon as I had finished graduating and uh, to kind of give back and, and to, to contribute back to, to the island, you know, that, that raised me. Right, right. So daughter of the soil and definitely someone, I think, as a person with a legal background, quite capable of carrying out the laws to ensure we have a free, fair election on St. Martin as usual. Um, how do you feel about the challenge? I've, uh, we've taken it head on, you know, kind of grabbed the, the boom by the horns. And, and I think we've, you know, kind of hit the ground running, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak. You know, I had a conversation with your staff saying the election crept up on us. So Even though we knew it was coming. Yeah. yeah it's just a lot. before you know it, it's, uh, we're, yeah. we're in full, full swing, I think. And we're all moving at a, at a rapid pace to make sure everything goes off flawlessly from the outside. Right. So are there only any other projects that you have going outside of the election? With the voting bureau, that is yeah. Okay, no, not me personally. And um, outside of the election, no. Outside of the elections, pretty much not. You know, we're we're very much focused on on the elections itself. The the voting bureau has a very uh, designated and clear role within the electoral ordinance, which is that we carry out the electoral ordinance and everything that has to do with the uh, elections themselves. Okie dokie. Um, you get to know more about her in the coming weeks. Of course, late night's gonna try get an interview with her after. 
you know, she becomes the Minister of Justice, see what her plans is. Um, somebody look for Batman, make sure that he's okay. Call Alfred, tell him to make sure to look after Batman. It's, if you don't understand who Alfred is, then you're not a Batman fan. Uh, Alfred is Chris, because he's a servant. He's Batman bitch! <laughs> Speaking about Batman, bitch, the outgoing parliament had a closing ceremony of parliament today. When we come back, we are going to give you the highlights of this very interesting farewell speeches of these parliamentarians who are going to be leaving us. And was it petty or was it inspiring? You have to stay with the late night to find out. Late night show with Andrew Day. Let's begin. You've dreamt it. You've worked hard for it. And now you've got it. You deserve to enjoy the fruits of your labor and know that you're covered in case of a disaster, like an unexpected fire or a vehicular collision. At Magic Insurances, we focus on settling your claims quickly and fairly so you can get back to enjoying your life. Magic Insurances, fast, fair, and always there. New Jam. She my girl. Let's get ready for the party. Girl, what are you about it? Get ready for the party. Girl, what are you about it? Let's get ready for the party. Girl, what are you about it? Get ready for the party. Girl, what are you about it? What a party tonight. Someone tell me what a party tonight. What a party tonight. Someone tell me what a party tonight. At GEBE, we take the safety and quality of your water seriously. Every day, our dedicated sample collectors venture into the field, visiting the places that matter to you. Water tanks, school, supermarkets, home, and high-risk areas. Once these samples return to our water quality lab at KB, they embark on a journey that safeguard your well-being. Our dedicated analysts take over, sending these samples to the microbiology and chemistry departments respectively. This is where the magic happens. We test for a range of parameters, and we do this every single day, no matter what, including holidays and weekends. In our microbiology department, we focus on two major tests targeting various bacteria. Confirmation tests are conducted, and we have plans in place in case the results are confirmed. And then we do it all over again, seven days a week, 365 days a year, rain or shine, your water safety never takes a day off. So when you turn on the tap and enjoy a glass of GEBE's water, you can do so with confidence. GEBE, the power to serve. So let me start off with um, the closing of Parliament. Every second week of September, 
The parliamentary year closes, and on the Tuesday, it opens in the second week of September. It doesn't mean that there's a new parliament. It just means they close the year on the Monday, and then they open the parliamentary year on the Tuesday of the second week of September. Just to make sure that you're not confused and thinking that new members of parliament have been sworn in. The swearing ceremony takes place this upcoming 21st of September. So the new parliamentarians have not taken office as yet. We still have Kevin, we still have Silveria, we still have Chris, we still have um, 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 Cloyd Marlin, we still have um, um, all, all those, Akeem Arinel, they're still there until the 21st of this month. They got to clock in so that they could get that last paycheck. Let's go to the closing of Parliament. Yeah. The closure of a parliamentary year is required in order for Parliament to open the new parliamentary year 2024-2025. This will happen tomorrow, Tuesday, September the 10th, as prescribed by Article 46 of our Constitution. With the closure, which will take place today, of this parliamentary year, it is an opportune time for us all to briefly reflect on what this parliamentary year has meant for us. It is with this in mind that I will give the faction leaders in parliament the opportunity to direct themselves to a parliament and to the public at large for a maximum of 10 minutes so that they, so you the faction leaders, can reflect on this parliamentary year which we are closing today. A special, special good morning to the people of St. Martin. Madam Chair Lady, I just want to make notice of one fact that I realized this morning when I purchased the newspaper, where it says, landfill equipment fails after three years due to lack of maintenance. Madam Chair, um, I believe that the elections are over and the time for pointing fingers are way behind us. If you continue to read the article, where there's a picture of me back in 2021, if you continue to read the article, it clearly states that the NRPB did not fulfill their end of the bargain in terms of maintenance. So I would like to urge the government, Madam Chair, through you, to please let us move forward, let us work on the critical infrastructure, let us do what we need to do, let us work in the best interest of our people. Because if we're gonna spend four years looking backwards, God bless us all. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. I now give the floor to MP Roseberg of the Unified Resilient St. Martin Movement faction. MP Roseberg, you have the floor. Thank you, Grant Rising, Madam Chair Lady, also blessed week, Secretary General, my honorable colleagues in Parliament, the media, um, and most importantly, the people of St. Martin. Today, we stand at the closing of an extraordinary parliamentary year. But as we must reflect, we must ask ourselves, what is our role in Parliament? And did we fulfill this role accordingly? Our main role is representation of the people, all the people, legislative power, oversight of government, and budgetary control. One of our key elements when taking the oath to take office is based on Article 56 of our Constitution. It is to serve in the best interest of St. Martin and its people, and to lead with honesty, integrity, and accountability. That is our mandate, and that is our duty. Leadership is not a choice, it's a necessity. And we are not talking about dealership, no, we are talking about leadership with principles. Leaders who make decisions for the long-term good for our people, who stand tall in face of challenges and crisis. The URSM faction is a party that represents you, all the people of St. Martin. We only have been part of this parliamentary year for seven months. One thing we can say, it was an experience that is engraved in our memories. The grandstanding, the personal attacks, the manipulation, the urge of power, the endless investigations, the walking out of meetings to avoid quorum, this all have turned our parliament into a show, a political novella. This is not why the people of St. Martin elected us. The focus should have been on legislation, 
on policies that improve the lives of our citizens, represent, representation of their rights. Too much time was wasted on political distractions. We can no longer afford to operate like this. It's time to realize the power of the choices we make. The people of St. Martin have actively showed that in the past election. We must reflect and think on how we can do better. Every decision we take affects the lives of our people and of St. Martin. In this moment, now more than ever, we must recognize the weight of the positions we hold. Talk is cheap and the people are tired of it. They are watching. They're demanding action, not just empty promises. We have had two elections in nine months' time. It's time to raise the bar in this honorable house and to truly serve the people of this beautiful country who elected us. St. Martin deserves representation that is strong, transparent, and that's what the URSM stands for. The URSM fraction is only, as I said, in Parliament for the past seven months. But we haven't been sitting still. With the two seats, we have taken our role seriously working tirelessly for the improvement of the people. I, for example, have been called a rookie, but that hasn't stopped me from contributing to the change. Being new doesn't mean being silent, and it doesn't mean standing on the sidelines. It means working harder to ensure that we are fulfilling our responsibility to this nation. We are proud of the many critical questions we have posed, not to obstruct, but to ensure that the government serves the people with transparency and accountability. As representatives of the people, it is our duty to serve the country and its citizens with integrity and determination. The progress we make is not only for today, but for the generations that will follow. Since USM entered into Parliament, we have been working on several law amendments that directly address the concerns of our citizens with regards to the um, evaluation of poverty, such as a breakfast program for the students awaiting the legal completion we have contributed for the past two years, in the breakfast programs of one of the schools, but also salary scale adjustments for teachers, risk allowance for, on, for our heroes, organized consultations on the legal status of civil servants, um, in particular within the justice ministry, and the establishment of small claims court and the multidisciplinary chamber courts. And I invite MP Otley of the United People's Party to take the floor. MP Otley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good day to my honorable colleagues. As we mark, I would say, the end of a short parliamentary term, I must say that everything is for a reason. However, on behalf of the United People's Party, we will stay and remain dedicated to working for the people of St. Martin. I have often said it, and I still stand by it, none of us run elections to not be in a government. But however, we are here today, and like my colleagues say, it's time to work for the people of St. Martin. It's time to highlight not our differences as that much, because it will happen on the floor of parliament, but highlight our love for country. However, it will be remiss of me to say as well, the responsibility lies on the coalition to ensure that you communicate, ensure that you are in line with each other, and ensure that you can keep it together. I say this, Madam Chair, that in six short months, the United People's Party has submitted three draft legislation initiatives. And we will continue to do so, whether in government or in opposition. We will continue to work for the benefit of the people. There are many pressing issues that we all address. And my philosophy is, we can come to parliament every day. We can grandstand every day. But are you carrying out your duties as a legislator? Are you presenting laws, motions, and taking action to assist the people? For years and years, we have fooled the public of St. Martin by thinking, the one that speaks the loudest or speaks the best or speaks the longest is the hardest working. But that is not the case. It's a new day, new era, new time. I say to the Parliament of St. Martin, as we close the parliamentary year, let us remember, at the end of the day, 
at the end of the day, we all have different ideologies. That's why we all are on different parties. But we all have the same goal, a better St. Martin. A better St. Martin. And it comes with communication and understanding. <coughs> communication is often the key that is neglected that causes misunderstandings. Misinformation is also the key that causes confusion. So I look forward to a new parliamentary year where myself and my colleague, on behalf of the United People's Party, will continue to work, continue to strive for excellence. I always believe if you strive for perfection, you will never be perfect, but you will only do your best. So I ask the people of St. Martin to continue to monitor each and every one of us in here as parliamentarians. Monitor who are doing their job. Monitor who are bringing legislations. And monitor who is holding the government accountable. I say to you, public of St. Martin, I am ready. We are ready to take on whatever task is in front of us. And we will put our best foot forward. So to my colleagues, to some of you that are returning and some unfortunately not, I do not doubt your love for St. Martin. And I often said it, and I'll say it here publicly on the floor of Parliament. Once you postulate yourself, I have the utmost respect for you. Because you could have stayed on Facebook and rant all day, but you have decided to be a part of the solution. Thank you. I invite MP Gums of the Party for Progress to take the floor. MP Gums. Thank you, Madam Chair, Lady, and good morning, and bon simang to you. The Khrifir, my colleague MPs, those in the Tribune, those listening online or via radio. Uh, Madam Chair Lady, I struggled a bit actually thinking of what to say for the closing of this parliamentary year, 2023-2024. Uh, a year that has seen not just uh, the one general election that we all anticipated, but a second snap election as well. The last eight months have been difficult um, and confusing, and they've left me with many feelings that aren't yet resolved. And if that's how I feel, I can only imagine how the public is experiencing these last eight months. Because to my personal opinion, and I believe I can speak on behalf of the Party of Progress faction, it has been eight months of missed opportunities. Missed opportunities to come together for the people of St. Martin. Blinded by so much ego, so much capitalism, and Scooby-Doo plans that are more transparent than cling wrap. I'm hoping that with the opening of tomorrow's new parliamentary year and with the pending arrival of new members of parliament that we stop this continuous hurt of the people. Because guess what? They have sent a second message to us in here to stop the bacchanalist style of politics and to dig deep and self-reflect to maybe stop surrounding oneself with sycophants and yes men and women because that has not led to growth. It has only led to self-destruction. It's my sincerest hope that tomorrow, the opening of a new parliamentary year, does not also mark the start of wacky plans to destabilize parliament and take down the new government, but of something else. Something that is based in integrity, in good ethics, in collaboration, even when the opportunity to be counterproductive is there. In recognizing that stability is important even when you're sitting in opposition. It's a lesson I learned observing my father's political career for 23 years and one the PFP faction managed to live by for four years, so it cannot be that difficult a lesson to learn. The people have told us twice now in one year that the time for that 1990s destructive style of doing politics is done. The people have warned us that anyone who continues to try to bring it back, whether you're in politics or just an outsider trying to little finger your way into things, will be dealt with accordingly. So we must all move differently with that warning at the front of our minds. With that, Madam Chair Lady, I think I've set my reputation for being short, sweet, and to the point. I end by expressing my hope that with this new parliamentary year ahead, we deal with some pending issues that are meant to safeguard our democracy and our country, including the draft legislation to regulate tendering and procurement so that we spend the people's money ethically and efficiently, the finalization of the criminal procedure code, and the introduction of bigger, bolder steps to electoral reform to protect our electoral processes and ensure that the continued journey of being a country is sustainable, ethical, and steeped in good governance. Thank you, Madam Chile. MP Jacobs of the National Alliance Faction. MP Jacobs. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning to you. Good morning to the Khrifir, my colleagues here in Parliament, those in the Tribune. And of course, good morning to the people of St. Martin. Reflection on a year of service 
of the National Alliance during parliamentary year 2023-2024. Though some introductory remarks were given, I know it must be confusing to the people of St. Martin trying to understand exactly what's going on. Every year, the parliament has a opening and a closing in the second week of September. And so this year is no different, despite having a year which started off with high expectations after three plus years of stable governance, despite resignations and shifting allegiances right here in parliament that has brought us to a simple majority back then. I would like to, at this point, give thanks to the members of parliament who served during the first half of this parliamentary year and especially to the NA members of Parliament, Marlin, Pantaflet, Richardson, and Rumu, for your commitment and dedication to the people of St. Martin in all that you did during your tenure. A cautiously positive outlook, Madam Chair, was given by the Jacobs II government through His Excellency Governor Bailey in his speech highlighting needed continuity in projects, programs, and reforms electoral reform being one of them, but of course many reforms in taxes and other matters that were needed to bring St. Martin after many, many years of neglect, not just the last four, but many, many years of regret, re neglect to where we need to be, to be able to build on a future sustainable development for St. Martin's people. That with the understanding that we just come out of severe crises. Back to present day, 12 months and two elections later, with even more changes of allegiance between parties and persons, has brought us to the end of this parliamentary year, where yes, some progress has been noted with the approval of Budget 23, Budget Amendment 23, as well as Budget 2024, and long overdue capital expenditures finally being made available for the needed infrastructure upgrades, road projects, ICT, vehicles for justice and other workers within government, as well as upgrades to the prison, among many others. But significantly and more concerning, Madam Chair, is the aura of halting, stopping, and stagnation of these very needed projects, something that our National Alliance faction, though slightly diminished in the coming term, on the 20th of September, will continue to stand behind these sustainable development projects of Sweet St. Martin. With education leading the way to upgrade our most valuable resource, our people, encouraging lifelong learning, but also bringing more awareness right here in Parliament. I've heard great speeches throughout my years, whether on the other end or on this end, but it is action that speaks louder than words. And so I would love to see moving forward that this resource, the people of St. Martin, is actually given the attention it needs in these halls here of Parliament while we hold the government accountable in the areas of education, environment, infrastructure, ensuring that affordable housing, health, and the needed reforms in finance, as well as the overall improvement of the quality of life of the people of St. Martin, which we champion so well with our mouths, will continue in actions by monitoring the government, holding them accountable when necessary, bringing changes, amendments to legislation, as well as initiatives, as we have been known to do right here in the, floor, in the halls of parliament. We as a National Alliance government, or parliament, sorry, will continue, faction in parliament, will continue to hold accountable the execution of ongoing projects, programs, upgrades and legislation, and the actions needed to continue to boost our economy. Because in reviewing that speech from last year, Madam Chair, I was quite, let's say, proud to note that there was projected um, positivity in terms of the economy, in terms of the income of our government, and the continued progress in legislation. This, the National Alliance faction will continue to monitor and contribute to as we always come parliament, government, Opposition or proposition. Whoa, I like it. I want more. There's more. Another commercial break when we come back, more highlights of the closing of Parliament.
Did you know I just signed up for Flex by Talem? Do you mean Flex like this? Um, definitely not that. <laughs> Do you mean Flex like this? No, definitely not that. Do you mean Flex like this? No, definitely not Flex like that. Talem's Flex is a mobile plan that adapts to your needs. Each month, I get a preset monthly fee that has a set amount of data, SMS, and minutes. So I know what I'm getting. But say goodbye to overages and bill shock because when I go over my postpaid plan, it switches to prepaid. So I have the flexibility to top up what I need when I need it. I'm in complete control. My budget, my rules. Hello, my people. Make sure you tune in to Sit, Sip and Chat every Monday at 5 p.m. on TV15 and every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. And make sure to tune in to The Late Night Show with Andrew Dick from Monday to Friday at 10 p.m. with a repeat in the afternoon for no reason. In the afternoon, The Late Night Show at 3 p.m. Thank you, TV15. Thank you, TV15. Make sure to tune in. Make sure to tune in to the late night. And sit, sip, and chat. Late night. Let's continue our journey with the closing of Parliament. It's so good. It's so juicy. Somebody give me some tea. This is going to be good. <laughs> Don't spill it, though. It's good. Good morning. Good morning to the people of St. Martin. Good morning to my honorable colleagues. Good morning to the chair lady, Little Field. Good morning to everyone. Madam Chair, this is actually going to be the shortest speech you would hear from me in Parliament. I am not going to preach no doom and gloom at all when it comes to St. Martin. I will tell you why. Because I believe the future of St. Martin is bright. Madam Chair lady, I look at my colleagues who are here. I look at those who will be staying, and I look at those who will be going, including myself. And I say, Madam Chair, we have a parliament with individuals who will be coming in that are forward thinking and want the best for this country. I also look at my colleagues who are here and those who will be in opposition or who will be opposing the government. And I see individuals who are strong in their commitment, strong in their love for country, strong in their things and whatever they believe is best for St. Martin. So there's no need to preach doom and gloom whatsoever when it comes to this country. Madam Chair, when I look behind me, I see individuals such as Member of Parliament Utley. I see Member of Parliament La Cruz, who will be staying in Parliament. I see Member of Parliament Duran. I see Member of Parliament also Arian. I see Member of Parliament Roseburg. And I'm not leaving MP Marlin and MP Jacobs out. I know we will be marching on to as well, Madam Chair, temporarily. But I also see Member of Parliament Melissa Gomes. I see Member of Parliament De Weaver. I see Member of Parliament also Bruch and Roseburg and Katai. And I say we are good people here in Parliament that have the best for this country, Madam Chair Lady. So I have no fear whatsoever. What I will say to the people of St. Martin, I got nothing but love for this country. So Madam Chair, with that being said, I am saying to the people of St. Martin, thank you. Thank you and thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to serve in this honorable body, to serve in the executive branch. And I served also as well with members who are parliament here, and we did well. And I always said that was the best government that we have had. So to the people of St. Martin, I got nothing but love. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself. God bless each and every one of you guys. Goodbye. MP Kotai, you have the floor. Thank you, Thank you Madam Chair. Uh, good morning to my fellow parliamentarians, President of Parliament, all my fellow colleagues working in this building, persons present in the Tribune, and to the listening public. I will start with saying that it's an honor to stand here today with all of you. 
Today, as I reflect on the path, officially be a member of parliament on the 21st of May, 2024, one day after government fell. I must say, this year has been an interesting one. When I watched the year closing remarks in the parliamentary year of last year, I will say a lot has changed, while a lot hasn't. What has changed is that from the 15 members who were year, here a year ago, few faces remain. Besides that, what has not changed is the quality of life of our citizens. In the last 12 months, we saw a major portion of the time go in a campaign rhetoric, rhetoric two elections in the same calendar year. We saw the pulling of support from the existing government to the support being offered back within a few days. When someone jokes and says, boy, say Martin ain't a real place, I used to take it as a joke, but sometimes I do wonder. It depends on the collective will of us 15 here to set the examples in the community that we are in. Although we are called politicians, please let us leave politics out for the growth of our nation. Our people deserve better. In these last 12 months, our largest kingdom partner, partner the Netherlands, held their elections in November of 2023. The European Parliament held their elections as well in June of 2024. As we are surrounded by uncertainties in these periods of repeated change of political guard, our largest trading partner, the United States of America, is preparing for the elections as well. I urge everyone here, those listening, those watching, to understand it's about time we realize that being a small island, we cannot afford a frequent change of guard. I will add, by no means we can have a stagnant four years without any progress. Stability is the need of the hour, but stability is not a hostage to malice. Our population deserves better, and it's our moral duty to give them better. Reflecting on the past year, I beam in pride, knowing that it is a St. Martiner who's representing us in the West Indies cricket team. But with this pride, I reflect about the lack of opportunities to our youth due to the infrastructure of our nation and the facilities of what it can offer. As I stand here and reflect on the progress or lack of progress over the past year, I will also bring up a small motivation for my fellow parliamentarians today. As many in the community expect the execution of policies from the elective representatives, we have to define our role as legislators with tangible impact on societal growth. I think it's important again to note that what is happening here today is that we are closing the parliamentary year in accordance with the Constitution. So as we open the parliamentary, the new parliamentary year 2024-2025 on the 10th of September, so tomorrow, the members who are serving will serve for 10 more days before they return or not to the new parliament of St. Martin. So I just wanted to make that notification. I know that it is, we have had a very interesting and peculiar parliamentary year. I'm talking about the year 20. 23, 2024, during which, as many of my colleagues stated, we have had two elections, a regular election, and then a couple of months later, a so-called snap election. If you really look back, it is safe to say that the entire parliamentary year has been dominated by politics, because no sooner did we open the parliamentary year, so last year, September, then the preparations and campaigning for an election started. The election was held on January the 11th. Parliament took office, the new parliament took office in February, and then we were faced with all of the occurrences to which my colleagues referred before snap elections were called. And I think it would behoove all of us, and I've heard this from some of you, to while that is what it is in terms of the year that we're closing off today, have we learned anything? 
And I think we have. We have learned, for example, that the much talked about electoral reform, we really, really have to do something about it. And it's not only about changes to national ordinances, new ordinances, even the Constitution, if you wish. But I also believe that there are some matters on the level of the rules of order of parliament that can be adjusted in order for parliament to give its own input and impetus into the overall electoral reform that we all talk about. It is no secret that I was, I was not pleased with the fact that so soon after an election and a government, a new government taken office, that snap elections were called. While I understand why they were, why it was called, nevertheless, I thought that we were doing the people of St. Martin a disservice. However, given where we stand today, maybe, just maybe, it was for the best. Because the election, in my opinion, has clarified several matters that held the attention and the concern of the people of St. Martin. I hear reference, and rightfully so, to the duties of parliament. But I believe that the overarching, the overarching element of success in our endeavors will be collaboration with the government of the day. It is clear that individually, as members of parliament, we have our priorities, we have our visions, we have our intentions of things that we would like to do. However, on, if we really want to make progress, it will have to be in collaboration with the government, who I hope will be able not only to deliver a governing program, but to have a program with minutes and moments of evaluation of control by parliament specifically for the things that government is telling itself and the people of St. Martin that will be done by the government. If we look at areas such as areas that have a great influence on us and our people, just to mention a few, immigration, and we see the changing views, the changing legal and judicial views on immigration, it requires a different way of thinking about the matter of immigration. If we look at the kind of quagmire that we find ourselves in today with respect to the financial position of the government and thus by extension of the country, we need to talk and discuss a new financial model. We cannot continue to pretend that our discussion surrounding the budgets of the country, the annual accounts of the country, and keeping everything or trying everything to keep our country's growth within the parameters of approximately 500 million guilders, give or take a few million here and there every year, we're not going to be able to hack it. If we look at matters such as our debt situation and realize where we are today, it is unfortunate that we are still being, or this matter is still being used every time again as a way for especially the Netherlands to attain and obtain what they on, the, on that particular moment will consider important. We need to address the matter of our financial situation, also of course with the Netherlands, and we need to do that as soon as possible. The kingdom relations and the ongoing discussions that we have had about a dispute regulation. One of the reasons, in my opinion, that today we cannot convincingly present our case, which I believe we would have a strong case in terms of tying the COVID loan, loans repayment 
to whatever is at the order of the day, such as, for example, the Enya debacle, if without that dispute regulation where we can take a hard case to be decided upon through so-called arbitration, we will continue to be spinning our tops in the mud, to use an old adage. Being a nearly an eternal optimist, I view every opportunity as one to do better, make better, and amplify our resolve as to where we want to take this country. There are many, many challenges before us, and I do believe, as I started out to say, that unless we address the fact that we are operating within a party political system, nevertheless are continuing in the direction of a more personal political system, we're going to have to make the choice what exactly it is and what it will be. Because we can change starting from our rules of order right up to the Constitution, but we, if we allow the personal political system to continue without it being challenged, then we will constantly be facing issues in this respect that would jeopardize the stability of this country. Again, I am heartened by um, some of the presentations, in fact, all of the presentations heard here by the members of parliament and the factions of parliament. And I do believe with that kind of resolved being actually being followed, I think um, many good things can happen in not only this parliamentary year, but also the upcoming governing term based on the outcome of the election of August the 19th. I, there are several phrases that I every so often remind myself of, especially in the position of member of parliament, leader of a party, um, on some occasions like now, um, president of parliament. And one of those is the serenity prayer in which you really need to look at those things that you can change and pray for the courage to do so. And also the wisdom to know the difference between what you can change and what you cannot change. Another phrase that I believe works very well for me every so often, especially at times such as these, is the Maria Robinson quote about nobody being able to go back and start a new beginning, but anyone can make a new ending. And starting today can make a new ending. So with that, members of parliament, public of St. Martin, all those tuned in to this meeting, I thank the members of parliament once again, and I would like to give them some information regarding the new parliamentary year, and I want to specifically explain our theme for the opening of the new parliamentary year. And I do this also referring back to my previous statement about the opening of the new parliamentary year, because tomorrow, during the opening of the parliamentary year, we will have His Excellency, the governor, delivering a speech, a statement, on behalf of the government of St. Martin, and the government that is there, um, actually in a caretaker status until because we have had election. So that too is, um, makes it necessary for us to look at the opening of parliament from a parliamentary perspective. And so we have chosen for the theme, we always choose as parliament a theme for a new parliamentary year. And we have chosen the theme of uncovering and supporting agriculture and sustainable agricultural practices. The chosen theme seeks to highlight sustainability in our community and specifically sustainable practices and methods currently being utilized by local leaders and pioneers in the agricultural sector with the aim of securing food security. These initiatives provide concrete and insightful examples of how a sector such as this 
can mean so much for the community of St. Martin on different fronts, hence the theme for this year. Additionally, still sticking to the theme, Parliament will sit in a Central Committee meeting on Wednesday, September 11th, 2024, at 11 o'clock to receive an update by and go into discussions with the Minister of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport, and Telecommunication regarding agriculture on St. Martin. I also like to make note of the fact that, again, this year I will be presenting the 12th Annual President of Parliament Award to a young person who is a great example to the youth and who has contributed positively to the community and country. Tomorrow, this will, this will happen tomorrow during the reception to celebrate the opening of the parliamentary year 2024-2025. This young person was selected by a committee of parliament based on criteria that was set by parliament. Colleague members of parliament, Support staff, ladies and gentlemen, I once again want to thank you for your participation throughout this parliamentary year 2023-2024, and I thank you for your participation, again, members of parliament, in this final meeting of the year, the parliamentary year, that is. I look forward to a fruitful and effective new parliamentary year commencing, as I mentioned, tomorrow. You see Siberia jacket? It's confusing like the country. It's all over the place. <laughs> I should be a comedian. Anyway, um, we would like to wish the members of parliament well. Of course, we're going to do our montage um, on the 21st when they leave. And we're going to make sure we check on them all the time. Um, I'm still putting out a missing person for... Uh, member of Parliament, leader of the United People's Party, Omar Otley. Haven't seen him for a while. I did notice that he spoke into Parliament, so thank you so much. But still, we need more because we need that same energy that you had during the election season. Remember, you get re-elected, no, you, 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 not because you're opposition, you're going to just sulk and be there crying that you didn't get your thousand votes. Don't worry, Messalina holding it for you. That is it for the late night show. Thank you so much for watching. Until tomorrow, do have a safe and pleasant one. I think we should have politics tomorrow. Mm -hmm.